Not sure if you've seen um, situations where there's a loop like this uh, designed and you might be wondering how, how do you get it to go over here and under here. It's literally what happens is you cut the one object exactly like the shape of the other object and it mimics that it's running over it. So if I switch off the, the color, the greenish turquoise color, you'll see it's actually a cut through in that area. So the perception is the turquoise is running over the black here or over the gray, dark gray and underneath there. But in, in essence, it's just been cut away and it gives that impression. Uh, people use different techniques to do it. I will just show you the technique I used to get here. And also, if you're going to extend it, if you're going to make loops within more loops within more loops, it does become more complicated and it and you might have to do a few tweaks around, but I think the, the general principle is what I want to show you. Yeah, so let's let's start by taking this area, just maybe make it a, a nice dark green area. I'm going to duplicate this, keep control down, just drag one out and constrain it so that we can keep it nice aligned. And say we've got that purple and that one, and we want to make the one loop in between. So the principle is... We are going to use the exact shape that we want to run around. So this purple, we want the purple to run around here and appear over the one section and under the other section. We've got to create a duplicate of this and place one in front of the green and one behind the green. The one in front of the green or closest to us is the one we're going to use to cut through the green so that the circle at the bottom can appear to be showing through and appear to run over the object like with that cutout. So what we need to do is first in one's mind got to get the idea and explain it in your mind so that you get clarity on it and then you develop the system. So purple is going to be used to cut through the green. So the cut is going to happen through the green and we're using the purple to do that. But once we use the purple to do the cut through the purple is going to disappear because we're going to use one of these uh, boolean features. We have to create another purple one that's going to be left over after we've done the cut through. So what we would do is create, select the purple. I'm going to go control C, control V. Here in the layers, they have created a second one. So to, to make sense of it that we know what we're working on, I'm going to just change the one color. I'll just change this to maybe a... Uh, maybe an orangey color so we can see that. So if I switch this off, there's the purple. And if I switch that off, the green is at the bottom. Now, the interesting thing is I want the green, the uh, purple one, I want the purple one to be right at the back of the green. So let me just move it. I'm going to select the purple, uh, control and right left square bracket, move it there. I want it to be at the back because... When I cut through, whether I cut through on top of the green there or at the bottom of the green here, the purple at the bottom will appear to be behind on one section and where the cutout happens, it will appear to run over the green area. Okay, so that's the logic. So if you can picture that and, and you can talk your way through it, then it will make sense because when you start to get many circles going, you've, you've got to kind of understand what is cutting, uh, which object is cutting the other object. So now we introduce... The duplicate of this purple, which I've switched off here and I've changed the color to orange so we can identify it. So the orange one is above the green and the purple one is below the green. Okay, but the purple and the orange, they originate from the same space. So they belong to each other. It's a duplicate of each other. So if I switch back on the orange now, you'll see the orange will cover you and you'll probably not see the purple. So if I do that... It's over there. So how do I do a cutout now? I'm going to use this tool over here, this subtract tool. So I've got to subtract a area on top from the area at the bottom. So I'm going to use a piece of the orange, which is a duplicate of the, the purple donut. I'm going to use a piece of that to cut through the green. So how do I get a piece? Because if I do the subtract now, it's going to cut two slots inside this green. Because we've got a donut, which we're using for the circle, I can press A or I can click onto the node tool and then it gives me the handles here. Okay, so I'm going to pull it through there and I can move this one around there. So this piece is the piece of the orange 
that I'm going to use to cut through the green. If I decided to cut at the bottom here, I could have taken that around there and done that. So if I hide this orange here now, you'll, you'll see this green at the bottom. And behind the green is that purple. Okay, so now we select the orange and I'm going to select it. Keep shift down and select the green in this area. Sorry. So those two are selected. The orange piece here in the layers, you can see it, which is this piece, is going to subtract from the green. So it's going to make a slice in the green that's the same shape as this orange. Not uh, you'll see the orange extends beyond the green here, but all that the subtracts is going to do is subtract this shape from that shape and it's going to cut it out there. So don't worry that it extends over here. It doesn't have to be perfect on there. That's not the purpose. What must not happen though is, is that it crosses on top here because then it will cut through the object there also. So if we go there, I've got those two objects. Now I go subtract. When I click here, you'll see what happens. There you see the purple goes behind there because the circle, the purple one, is behind the green. Here it looks like it runs over it. And the reason why it looks over it is because we've cut out the green to the exact shape of the purple. So if I hide the purple now, you'll see that's what's happened with the green. Okay, so let me just go uh, through this one again. I'm going to just create another circle here, call it blue. blue. So here's the principle. I'm going to use this to cut through. It's going to loop through the purple one. So the purple one's going to get a cut either here on top or at the bottom. So I've got to create another one like this circle. And I've got to place one on top like this and one right at the back of the purple. Okay, it's got to sandwich the one I'm cutting through. So I come here, control C, control V. And to know where it lies here, you can literally look here. I've made the copy now. These are the two copies. And I want them to sandwich the purple one. So I've got to take one of them and move them to the bottom. Instead of dragging it here, I press Control and left square bracket. You'll see that one pop down to the bottom. Okay. So this one here and that one there are duplicates of each other. And they've got the one they're going to cut through in front of it. Now the one on top is going to cut through this purple one. So I'm going to change this color so I can distinguish it when I when I optimize it when I make it a bit smaller so let me make it maybe that color and then I press A to get to the node tool and I think I'm going to go to the bottom area oh, I did the bottom area with that one let me try the top area so I'll just do that so this reddish area is going to cut through the purple and it's going to make that this turquoise area looks like it's running over but it's going to cut out there so we go select that and immediately below it we've got the purple so that little piece is going to cut in here and then the donut at the bottom is going to shine through. Let's do that. And there we go. Okay, so there we have it running and underneath there. Just another thing, remember that uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. If, if you had to do something like this, let me just show it to you. If you had to have an object like this and you were doing, you know, something on this level, that you wanted to make as a cut through. Let me just show there. And you wanted to make that a cut through. Same principle would apply. It doesn't have to be an exact, you know, circular shape. Let me just do this quickly. I'm go control C, control V. Um, I, here's the red one. I want one of these duplicates to be at the bottom. They've got to sandwich it. Think about sandwich. Control left bracket. So these two same areas are going to sandwich the one in, in the middle that that's going to cut through. So let me choose the one on top and change the color. Uh, let me change it. Okay. And then I can take this one on top. We've now sandwiched it. This one and that one are duplicates. I've changed the color so I can see the difference between when I do the modification. So this one I'm going to use for cutting out. I press A to get the area and there we go there. And then I take these two, I do the cutout, and there we go. There we've got a loop that goes on top and goes at the bottom there. Just another important thing you've got to note is when you're making these objects, just make sure that there's zero stroke on them and that the stroke is transparent. Else you can have artifacts that come in here with a little stroke where it cuts through. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. And... Uh, 
gives you a bit of insight into how to create links and chain links and loops into each other. So have a great and fantastic day and God bless.